We're going out on video chat to the City of Champions, Edmonton. Joaquin Gage joins us. Uh, newest broadcaster, but uh, people will know his name from his years in the Western Hockey League and his 23 games with the Edmonton Oilers. It's been a very long time since I've had the opportunity to chat with this gentleman. Gager, good morning. How are you? I'm good, Rod. Thanks for having me on. Well, when Clark told me he had you lined up, I was pretty excited. Do you remember way, way back in 93, 94, when you spent 53 years with the Prince Albert Raiders, and I was just a year older than you, and I was the voice of the team? I I actually do. That uh, that was a it was kind of a culture shock going from PA to PA. I uh, I was in Portland before, so it was kind of a bigger city, but. Um, I was no stranger to the 306. I uh, I did go to Athel Murray College in Notre Dame for three years, so prairie winters were quite familiar to me. Well, and again, I'll tell you, people out here will know your name. You mentioned going to Notre Dame, played in the Chilliwack Chiefs, Billingham Icehawks, went to the WHL final with Portland, and then in PA, and then all over pro hockey. But for those that have got <laughs> a, yeah, sorry to say, <laughs> sponsored by Samsonite. Uh, what is your, <laughs> what's the update in your life now, Gager? Um, well, trying to find new professions after hockey is a challenge for, uh, for most hockey players. I think after they stop playing, I was able to play in Europe for 10 years. So <laughs> it's funny. I look at my life and it's kind of like I lived it in reverse a little bit. I kind of had the retirement life of traveling ar- around Europe before I had to actually start my real life. But, uh, Right now, basically, I've uh, started a new career. Um, I'm uh, with Freedom 55 Financial, helping people with their uh, risk tolerance and matching them to their investment portfolios. So to get all technical with you. (laughs) Yeah, no problem. Well, I'll tell you what. All I know about the financial planning guys is they don't seem very busy and they make a lot of money. So if that's what you have to look forward to, good for you, Gager. (laughs) <laughs> it's it's going in reverse for me right now, but hopefully it'll pick up in the next little bit. <laughs> well, stuff like this can't hurt. And and by the way, Robin in Prince Albert's watching. He says, Raider alumni Gage, one of the greatest goalie names ever, Joaquin Gage. And maybe that's why people remind you, but you were pretty, or remember you, but you were a pretty good goalie too. But Gage, you are doing a podcast now with our friend Dustin Nielsen. Can you tell us a bit about that? Um, yeah, I was actually shocked. I guess I was uh, the last call for Dusty to find a, a sidekick for the for the show. Um, it's great. Dusty, you know, he's the he's Mr. Davos out here now with the Spengler Cup coverage. Um, I'm just along for the ride with this thing. It's a lot of fun. Um, I'm uh, I, it's I think my biggest fan is my mother, though, because she uh, she does live out on Salt Spring Island. I I grew up on the coast, so at least she gets to see me at least twice a week. <laughs> well, Gage, you're just talking hockey and, and sports is probably a lot of fun for you. And I mean, you're in Edmonton. So last hour, we had Jermaine Franklin talking about the Flames side of tomorrow night's game. Battle of Alberta, all the build up. What's the Edmonton side of Cassie and Kachuk for tomorrow night at Rogers Place? Well, it's been uh, it's <laughs> it's been an amazing week and a half since this All-Star break. Um, just the amount of emotions going through. Uh, I think for the most part, I think it leans towards more uh, Cassian. I don't think they're going to fight, right? I think I would, I don't want to see them fight. I would rather see Cassian kind of maybe to be a little bit more of aggressor, always clean, but I would, I would target other guys. Um, make sure you're finishing every check. It, the, the building's going to be ridiculous tomorrow. I'm uh I'm trying to see if I can get in there somehow and watch that game tomorrow, but it's, uh, it's exciting. The battle of Alberta is definitely back. Um, and I, I just can't wait to see what happens. I, I don't want, I don't want Cassian and Kachuk to kind of settle it. And I don't want things to die. I want this thing to last because they do play them again really quickly. So, uh, and the points are so important in the, in the Pacific. I, I, I really think you can see how, how crazy the Pacific is with, with the teams just, one game you can go from fifth place to first place and it's it's going to be an exciting couple months here going down the stretch uh rv you jump in anytime but gager i mean i was 17 years in the western league and hockey hasn't changed a ton it just seemed that in that big build-up game there never seemed to be anything is that what you're basing this off of off of because i am i don't expect anything either and the fact that george paris has to come into the game i find embarrassing you're these are grown men you're not 
12. I know how important that race is in the Pacific. I mean, if Calgary is up here and Edmonton was down here, maybe I'd see something. But this is far too important of a game and too late in the season for something to break out. Yeah, way way too important. They they know that they're they're professionals. I'm sure Cassie knows that too. Um, if he does get a chance to uh, to to blow someone up, I think he's going to take that shot. But I think he'll he'll stay within the rule books. You, it's just um, th- those four point games everyone talks about when you, uh, especially in your own division, you can't you can't sink behind too quick because uh, this isn't a real real important stretch for the Oilers coming off a week off. Having um, three quick games like this, they really need these points. Um, I like the way they're playing, though. They went in on a hot streak. Mike Smith has seemed to have found his game, um, and they look good. We have Benning coming back, so I really like the Oilers' chance going down the stretch. It's a, it's, it's really going to be exciting. We're, so we're sort of in the. I mean, it's such a, a logjam, and as far as the the standings go, yet we're in the dog days of the regular season that's much of it has elapsed yet there's so much yet to go how nice is it to have a game with this much build-up when we're, we're talking late january it's not even anywhere close to the playoffs yet well in edmonton we we haven't really had a chance to get excited for these types of games at this time of year so um we're uh this the city's a buzz um it's all and all the sports radio shows and on uh on tv are talking about right now is this next game so um it's an exciting time to be an oilers fan again uh we did have some struggles in the in the month of december there for a little bit um but it's just i as a player i always found this time of year a little bit tougher um there were so many more games left to play um and you just every game meant so much so uh the oilers have put themselves in a great position um they're in the hunt usually at this time they're they're looking they're outside looking in so they're right in the mix of things and um we're just going to see what happens gage your last one for you who is the most famous nhler that scored on you oh god there were so many (laughs) how much time do we have (laughs) um i don't know i I've had this question asked before. Um, I uh, Peter Forsberg scored on me, um, but I think just as a kid growing up, I uh, I was a big fan of uh, Dino Cicerelli, and I actually played against. Uh, I, I got into a game against the Wings way, way back when, and it was actually my first. Uh, my dad took me to my first NHL game, and that was to see the Red Wings. So it was a, it was an unbelievable feeling actually playing against them. But uh, not so great being scored on. But I remember when uh, when Dino tipped one home on me, and, and I was like, oh, I felt bad. But then I looked up and I go, well, it's Dino Cicerelli. <laughs> <laughs> Minnesota North Star is great. Well, I'll, I'll end with this. I was up speaking at a banquet in Shellbrook, Saskatchewan. That's north of PA, Joaquin, a couple of years ago. And the one question came from the crowd, said, who was playing on the Raiders when you were doing the games? And I said, oh, Shane Toporowski, Dennis Peterson, Shane Knighty, Steve Kelly, Joaquin Gage. And it was, they were just, they did, that was a <laughs> long time ago, Gage. Like they didn't even remember. It was, it was, yeah, it was, it was a long time ago. Those were great guys too. Like I remember playing, I played against Dennis in, uh, in Germany. He had a great career in Berlin. Um, uh, Topper, I didn't see too much of uh, Stevie once in a while. Just being a an Oilers alum, he's a he's a police officer down in Calgary, so I get to see him and a bunch. And it's like it's just like it picks up right where we left off as as teenagers playing together. So they uh, they might, people might not remember him, but I sure do. They were they were great guys, and I was lucky enough to have them teammates. Outstanding, and Gager, you're always uh, always a first class guy, mature kid. I appreciate this. We're following closely what you're doing. Keep it up and enjoy the game tomorrow night. All right, thanks, Rod. You're watching Rod Peterson on demand. For more of the Rod Peterson Show, visit rodpeterson.com or follow Rod Peterson on social media. 